My life was a near-death experience. Barbara Ireland is my name. A few months later, this training course started. I asked my closest friend to come along. It was lucky for me that my poor friend could be there. Every day was difficult in life. I signed a non-disclosure agreement, so I won't tell you anything more. High barriers, blindfolds, fires, and terrible characters spilling out were all meant to test your fortitude in the face of real-life danger. However, I thought it was handled in a really horrible manner. I ate a lot of food and drank a lot of water because we were working so hard outside most of the time. My main concern was staying hydrated. We slept for three hours a night for seven nights in a row. During the final full day, participants engaged in an endurance activity outside for a significant length of time. When we got back, it was too hot to be inside my tent. I was suffering from two conditions. First, heat stroke. I drank a lot of water because it was hot outside. But heat stroke symptoms are similar to regular stroke symptoms, so my senses were all mixed up. More dangerous to my health was a condition called hyponatremia, which is the removal of an excessive amount of salt from the blood. There are two possible reasons for this. Drinking too much water and perspiring excessively, which I had been experiencing all week. In addition, I later learned that my body has trouble holding on to sodium. I lay there with my friend holding my hand in that posture. My limb going numb and disappearing was the first horrifying sensation I experienced. The pain started in my damaged leg and then spread to my other leg, arm, and other arm as I started screaming at my friend. My head felt like it was caught in the midst of my whole body, squashed beneath this tree. I cried as though I had never cried before because the feeling was so awful and vulnerable. It was like air was being released from the very top of my cranium. At that moment, a movie-like soundtrack started. I could picture it all and feel it at the same time, like I was at the movies. It's difficult to describe, but I felt everything as it happened and could also watch it like a movie. We were having an argument when the movie stopped on a single frame. I was furious when a voice suddenly spoke to me. Even if it wasn't my usual inner monologue, it was there. The male voice inquired in a soothing tone, What were you thinking at that moment? This startled me enough that I was less concerned about what was going to happen to my legs. I focused on remembering my thoughts. Then I recited them. The moment I answered, the little movie ended, and a new one started. Here I was taking part and watching at the same time. I raised an eyebrow in the freeze frame, and the speaker said, What were you thinking right then? I replied, and a new situation unfolded. When I glanced down this time during our conversation, the voice asked, What were you thinking when you lowered your head? This went on for hours after I replied. For some reason, after a number of years and with a diverse range of relationships and interactions, I started to relive situations from my adult life instead of my childhood. It was a unique moment in time when I thought about something. On a few times, I tried to give misleading information in order to seem like a goody two-shoe or to avoid having to acknowledge that I had made a judgment call about someone. The speaker would inquire, pausing to acknowledge the reality. Are you sure about that? Though it was non-judgmental and kind, it made me reconsider my initial reaction. I would explain later, saying things like, well, actually, no, I was thinking blah blah blah. It would disappear the instant I disclosed the true solution, and a new movie would start. This continued for hours, and I had the constant feeling that my skull may explode at any second. After the three or so hours, I did feel a little bit weaker, but I was more focused on getting away from my body than on paying attention to it. The screen went black, and the movie ended abruptly. This is Barbara, you have a choice now. The voice went on. Would you like to stay or go? That made sense to me, it implied that I had the option of staying on Earth as a human or leaving. I can't stop crying since this is the first time I've ever experienced life on the other side. I had one foot in and one foot out. I was close to losing my bodily shape, yet I was still somewhat attached to it. Beyond that point, there is no more fear of death, not of dying in and of itself, but of dying itself. I have never experienced fear since it is a quality of love that is absent from this location. Love molecules seem to make up the space around everything, as though it were the air itself. It is the very material out of which everything is made, and which permeates everything. I cannot put into words the love you are feeling because we just do not have it here.
That side was utterly non-critical, warm, comforting, and encouraging. Just like all the great qualities about great connections and kindness in people, except a thousand times more so. When given the choice to stay or go, I was tempted to leave because it was so lovely and alluring. But I felt the connection to this location, too. I had, as it were, people I knew and things I needed to do. I like to be active, eat, travel, spend time in nature, read, and create art. I have to consider each of these aspects carefully. I found the questions I started to ask to be humorous from a humble standpoint. My questions centered on everything I was working on at the time, from incomplete albums to screenplays that were never picked up. What about those, though? I asked. They're not quite done yet. The guide said, Barbara, those really aren't important. Ironically, having goals in life naturally helps one feel significant. The guide stressed that relationships with other people are what really matter. Your efforts will be successful if they foster unity among individuals, be it with you, them, or other people. Absolutely, they are worthwhile if your endeavors encourage intellectual or emotional development in others. They are amusing, which is great, but it's not a big deal if they don't leave much of an impact. But if they are establishing contact, then it becomes quite valuable. At last, I said, okay, I'd like to get back into my body. I made the decision. Okay, so the voice told the listener to contact these four people when they got back. You have to go see three of them within a week, tell them these things and tell them your tale. Using the person as an example, my love for them extends beyond just stating, Hey, I love you. I wanted you to know. No, that was very important. The voice told you to show them how much you care by telling them how much you value them, how they have impacted your life, what lessons they have taught you, and why you adore them. Among them was my mother, who died just a year ago. That is why I am so distraught. I mean, my mother knows exactly how I feel about her. But the voice was quite strong, admonishing. You're going to be talking about love in a very different way to this person. I had an individual narrative to share with each person. My goal was to phone the fourth person at least once a week, even if it was only for five minutes, in an attempt to begin mending my relationship with them. I made a commitment to accomplish that. Once that was over, the other side kind of vanished from my memory. The swollen air started to return to my body in reverse. My limbs needed only a few minutes to react, and after that, I was fully in sync with my body once more. I opened my eyes to the most beautiful sight I had ever seen. A tree, my friend, her hair turned cold and auburn by the last of the sun's rays, and a big, ungainly bee stumbling around a flower. The sights, sounds, and colors overpowered my senses, and I could even make out the faint sound of a distant lecture. It's a truly amazing opportunity to experience this. I felt like I was starting again for about a month. Call it a rebirth or something. My entire awake time was characterized by the beautiful, exuberant thought, wow, I can't believe this place that I get to be in, and this body that I get to have. When you look into another person's eyes with authentic presence, you can see into their eyes as well as the outside of them. Being human is an amazing experience.